I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Um, you know, I thought I was going to share my screen. Hang on. Always some sort of technical difficulty. Boom, got it. OK. Um, hi, everybody. Um, you are seeing the presentation, right? Yes. OK, cool. <laughs> um, so hey, everybody. My name is Kendra Meyer, as Gail said. Um, my pronouns are she, her, or hers. Um, thanks for having me. Um, I'm the Shelby White and Leon Levy Digital Archivist at the American Museum of Natural History. Um, one part of my job is to work closely with the systems librarian to implement and subsequently manage a new digital asset management system that we have. Um, this is the first dams that's being administered by the library. Um, and because of this, we finally have the resources to realize a working digital archive program. So another part of my job is to guide policy and programming um, for digital archives and to handle all um, digital archive processing. So today I just wanted to briefly talk um, a bit about my experience trying to get the program grounded. Um, prior to this, I was the AMNH Fieldbook Project Archivist and I was also the digital libraries, um, the, the library's digital lab manager. So I had a really strong familiarity with um, the collection, the institutional history, and the department dynamics of the library. Um, and knowing these strengths and weaknesses was really helpful coming into this um, grant project um, because I could anticipate um, roadblocks and issues with open eyes. But on the other hand, I anticipated all the roadblocks and issues <laughs> with open eyes. It's really challenging to try to be objective and suggest improvements or changes um, when you're kind of like already in the groove and in that cycle. Um, so challenges always happening. Um, these were some that just started from the beginning. Um, like I mentioned, this is the library's first dams. Um, before we had no central storage repository, um, we had no consistent access and delivery solutions. Um, our methods um, were pretty customized for each different type of asset format. So um, requests for films and images were handled in completely different ways. It was piecemeal, it was time consuming. And discovery um, on the public side was um, somewhat limited and spotty. Um, we have a pretty small staff in the library and archive here for what seems like a big institution. Um, there's 12 of us, two of us are based, um, grant based, two, two of us are part time. Um, and I'm currently the only um, digital content administrator in the library. Um, because we had no resources to manage them, um, we had no real born digital collecting process in place. Um, we were really aware of the growing need. Um, literally, we had born digital collections from other departments that were sort of waiting in the wings for a transfer until we could properly accommodate them and steward them. Um, we had some born digital content in our accession backlog that we were just avoiding. <laughs> um, another challenge is that digital preservation is really intimidating, um, especially if you're starting from or think you're starting from scratch and you don't have a lot of dedicated resources. Um, it's overwhelming to um, even know where to start. And it's easy to think that it would be easier to just wait until you get some sort of one-stop shop solution in a system. Um, honestly, with my colleagues and I, like previously, like you, you said, digital preservation and like chills went down our spine, you know, everybody cringed, we changed the subject because we were just embarrassed by our lack of um, engagement with it um, that we thought, but it ends up, we were better. Um, just some other thing notes that I just always bring up is that it re, re, one of the challenges was requiring a, a mental shift in our thinking between um, recognizing the difference between digitized from analog and born digital collections. There's like really different, um, they're, they're related, but there's a different um, method to collection management for each of them and their needs are different. Um, what we previously had called digital special collections was um, an image database with um, analog surrogates um, and this is different. So. Um, and lastly, we did have these existing systems that we needed to integrate with. Um, we were 
starting up this brand, spanking new dams, bells and whistles, um, but it's not the golden ticket and answer to everything. It doesn't solve all the problems. So we wanted to make sure that we were um, complementing our other applications and letting each system do what it does best. Um, at the beginning of the grant, um, we had about a five month wait period between when it started and when the contract was finalized. Um, and at that point we knew we'd be able to begin onboarding. Uh, we suspected that once that began, it would be all systems go um, and there'd be no time for anything else, um, which was really good foresight. It was pretty intense. Um, the systems librarian, who's my boss, and I, we took the opportunity in those early months to review our existing digital assets, metadata, resources, and we developed a timeline for the project. Um, we anticipated growth um, and we selected very strategic collections to include as proof of concept to demonstrate how our digital program or new digital programs would be expanding and what services that the library would be able to support and offer um, on the enterprise level now um, for the museum. Um, this projected expansion and transformative shift in the digital um, landscape and our programs was the primary justification for this entire grant project. Um, so we realized that with that increased capacity and features, we would need foundational guidance about how the dams and the digital archive would now be governed. So there were a lot of decisions about policy, workflows, standards, and permissions that were in order. Um, luckily, my aforementioned boss is really awesome, and she let me front load these early months um, before implementation um, with a lot of like archival research and anticipatory uh, documentation and planning. Documentation is critical for a bunch of probably obvious reasons besides just I'm anal retentive. Um, but first, it's this is a grant, it's a term position. And I did wanna make sure that the structure would have a life beyond the project. Um, second, governance is system agnostic. So um, having principles, standards, um, methods, and goals works no matter what platform you use. So if at the end of this grant, all the funding drops out and we have to switch to like a plan B system, we can still have this um, framework. And third, I did want to be as transparent as possible for senior management and funding reporting. Um, if we're going to do the thing, let's just show them exactly where their money is going and where our steps are. Um, so I worked on workflows and policy mainly. Um, I began with workflows because having previously been managing digitization projects, I would say it was like my comfort zone. Um, and I modified and created, you know, I'm just gonna pull up this document. So I, <laughs> I modified and created research-based digitization requests, workflows, project-based digitization, internal born digital transfers, external donation guidelines. Um, and I really regret putting all this effort into this. Um, for me, it ended up being um, pre, pre presumptive, um, preliminary um, to actually having the system. And I'm actually currently going through and kind of rewriting most of these, um, I, I guess, intellectually it was helpful for me to be able to figure out this the steps and have answers to people as we talked it out but I really did put like a little bit too much effort into this um at the time um okay so then um I tackled the digital preservation policy next um I attended some I had already attended some really amazing digital preservation training classes um, I was about halfway through my DAS, my Digital Archive Specialist Certificate from the Society of American Archivists. Um, I knew having such a policy was one of the more important ways to guide us. Um, one of the things I had learned in all of my education was that there's no such thing as benign neglect with digital archives. Um, doing anything is better than nothing, because if you do nothing, you're bound to have loss in your digital materials. Um, so even if I drafted a preservation policy and it ended up showing every pain point and everything that we were lacking, it would be a valuable tool for us. Um, I began with a self-assessment tool I found online and I did an assessment based on the um, NDSR 
levels of preservation. And after this, I'm going to send an email with a bunch of links to some sites that I found very um, helpful, and I still do, in helping um, figure out how this program was going to work. Um, so I was pleasantly surprised when I did the self-assessment to find that we were, or once we had the dams in place, we would be doing basic preservation measures um, already. Um, and I found policy examples and templates that I bounced from. There are lots, as I said, of really fabulous resources to take advantage of. Um, so um, at the onset of drafting this policy, I did want to get stakeholder input, especially from my colleagues in special collections in the library. Um, and um, but um, on a practical level, I kind of knew that wasn't going to happen. Everyone is overstretched. As I said, we're a short, small staff. I'm the only one with digital in my <laughs> title. So it's, um, it's kind of like fell, fell on me. Um, and as I mentioned, we were a little um, digital preservation shy. Um, no one seemed really enthusiastic about writing policy. Um, but I kind of just went rogue and started going for it. Um, once I had a preliminary version, I shared it with some of my colleagues to get feedback. Um, and full disclosure, that didn't go very well for me. Um, it was, there, there was a little bit of pushback. I think there was a fear of um, shining a light on areas that needed growth, a fear of, um, there was concern because some of our other current library policies and documentations were in revision and that this would counterman those. Um, and also mainly, I think it just, you say policy and people um, immediately think it's gonna be like written in stone and it's not, it's a very organic fluid thing. Um, but I, I just kept going um, <laughs> and set up another meeting to get people involved. And we, we ended up kind of going through it. Um, and eventually the systems librarian just put this, um, posted this onto our website, um, mainly for transparency sake. Um, I think the most important, it, it, there's a lot of components to this. And again, I'll, I'll share um, some of the resources I found that helped me figure out which categories to do. Um, but it seems very um, redundant, but each section kind of helps figure out what you're doing and it gives you a, a framework to work from. To me, the guiding principles are really important. Um, and the scope and the collection development part priorities, this to, in my experience was the hardest part to get um, in, engagement with um, my colleagues and it's the, the weakest area in our policy. So um, I'm overdue for a review and revision of this this year. And I really wanna try to flesh this out a little more concretely. I, I, I put purposely vague language in here. But again, that's the beauty of it is it's iterative and it's constantly going to be reviewed and changed as need be. And the, here, the levels of preservation, this is based on the um, National Digital Stewardship Alliance. They have a set of um, levels of preservation. And this is where um, I actually was able to get the most um, engagement or buy-in from my colleagues because I think just because it's visual and it was easy to see that this was a progression. It wasn't like I was trying to solve all of our problems at once. Um, and yeah, let me go to the front end. So then that's, that's about it. Um, like how did it all work out? Yeah, preservation, we were actually doing a lot better than we thought we were. Um, we, you know, there's, it's, it's very iterative. It's very baby steps. So even things like having standardized um, vocabulary and, and metadata schema is a preservation tool. Like it's a, it's a good thing that um, having inventories, just having an Excel inventory of something is, is, is good. Um, it doesn't have to be fancy bag it, you know, dropping things with, you know, OAIS, you know, workflows and stuff. Um, so being transparent about it actually wasn't as scary as we had thought, like, you know, just talking about where we we're good and where we need to go is helpful. Workflows, like I mentioned, I have to revise those altogether. <laughs> um, but it's just knowing the system now, it's better. And organization, I do wish we had spent more time um, with this. Um, we, we discussed the collections management system organizations 
and relationships a lot. Um, and we, we planned it out, but we didn't visualize it much. Um, and we recently realized that we needed more um, documentation about this. So um, I do feel this is something that we probably should have done earlier in the stage, but um, recently my um, colleagues and I put together this, which is just sort of like a little roadmap for all the different systems that the library uses and what they're each good for. So this is on the website so researchers can find it and say, oh, I, you know, this is what I'll find here, this is what I'll find here. And somebody made a cool graphic. Um, and I probably just talked really fast. That was it. And that's it. And just <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you, Kendra. That was a lot of great information. <laughs> Um, so folks, if anyone has um, any questions, feel free to either, you know, un, un -mic or unmute your mic and shout it out. You can put it in the chat or you can put it in the shared notes document. I can read them out for you, which, whichever you're most comfortable, comfortable with. And I'll uh, wait a little bit to um, give folks a chance if you have any questions. Um, yeah, I, I really like talking about this stuff. So um, it's, it's um, any question, if you wanna reach out, please do. <laughs> Hi, I have a question. If sure. I, so I just quickly looked at, at the, uh, what's on the website because uh -huh. I, I couldn't really read what was on the screen, but it looks like, really well developed and yeah wow I'm I'm very impressed having looked at these or tried to look at them uh, what's available online is pretty limited um, but I, I noticed that you you named it like digital preservation policy but in fact you have digital collection development in there as well and I was just hoping that you could discuss that a little bit um, it was it was something that I found in a lot of other um, policies as well, um, that it's, I, I feel like the preservation, having preservation in the policy title is actually more of a misnomer um, because it is more about like overall collections administration. Um, but I did want to put preservation in there. <laughs> like it's like the whole thing is about the preservation um, and the collection, the collection development is, um, is part, I'm sorry, I'm trying to, um, the collection development is sort of part of the, what we can, what we're committing to trying to preserve. So like we're all, we're not taking certain things or we're, we're gonna avoid taking certain things that we don't have the capacity to retain on a long-term stop, you know, for, on a long-term basis. So that's part of what that is. Um, and yeah, but that's a good question. I know it's it's a lot in one policy um, and my boss and I have talked a lot about like coming up with more like just like a, a digital asset management system de defining governance as well. And I'm like, isn't that a bit much? But you know, it, it does, there's these little details to it that um, kind of, um, make it necessary to really granulate it. Um, or we're learning, we're, we're learning as we go, like what people are asking us and we have not come up with something to give them. <laughs> we're like, I have to write that. <laughs> um, thank you, yeah. Great, right, thank you so much. So it looks like there's actually a few questions in the chat uh, trying to clear yeah. up which digital asset management system. Yeah, we went, I'm going to write it in there and I'll send the link for our system, but um, we went with Orange, um, Cortex by Orange Logic. Um, it's, well, it's, it's managed by Orange Logic. It's um, pricey. It has a lot of fancy, dancy stuff. Um, we went from having nothing to like, you know, a Ferrari. And so it, it's been a, a, a huge learning curve for us. We, we love it. We're really happy with it, but it, it was, it was like a huge jump, um, in our awareness of what we could do. Um, but it's good because we're actually getting, um, some interest and, um, collaboration 
from other departments earlier than we had we thought we were gonna have to like really sell this to the rest of the museum, but people are like, no, 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 we, how can we get involved? So it's good that it's really scalable and that it's, it's gonna be able to um, grow to meet the different needs. But yeah, we went with Cortex. So our um, digital systems, we have um, the, the dams, um, we also have archive space for our archival collections management. Um, previ previous to the dams, we had um, an, an instance of Omeka for um, our image image collection database. Um, we also have DSpace, which is a digital repository for um, institutional um, literature, um, digital, and our our catalog, um, which is WMS. Um, we just switched over. We we did have um, Sierra, and we just switched to WMS, which I honestly don't even know what those letters stand for. World Share, World Management System, um, and so we're we're trying to get them to all work together. Okay, I see Lauren, you have your hand up. Hi, thank you for this great presentation. So we're in the process of, um, oh, I added an extra reaction instead of lowering my hand, but it's fine. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so we've started a kind of fledgling digital preservation program here that is mostly, um, we have a dark archive where we've been ingesting digital assets too, but we're also in the process of implementing a dam. And I was wondering if you could speak a little more to kind of the process of using a dam for digital preservation, because it's been my understanding that we can't use something like re rolling out NetX. Um, something like NetX wouldn't provide kind of that level of digital preservation um, that we would need. Um, um, so. Yeah, um, and this is actually gonna answer or help answer a question I think in the in the chat. Um, honestly, the the dams does a, most of what, we, what we're, Priding ourselves on with the digital preservation, other than redundancy. I mean, like we, we the way they built the system and our IT department was um, involved in figuring out that architecture. There's um, a lot of redundancy, and we're also keeping local copies of everything because we're like afraid of the cloud because it's all cloud. So we're we're just like okay, we're keeping stuff still. Um, so we have that built in. Um, already and then the 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 cortex does actually um, generate checksums on ingest um, and there's a lot of reporting tools that are available with it um, I do any kind of metadata extraction ahead of time and create um, we, we haven't really had that many um, collections for me to do but like I've been um, creating document um, records, inventories of that kind of data and saving it um, either in the dams or externally. We're working on trying to get a SharePoint integration um, for some things that are more like um, administrative or working docs um, that we don't want to put in the dams yet that we're... Um... So yeah, I mean, it, it is baby steps. And I, yeah, I was very self-conscious about our lack of doing a whole lot of formal digital preservation with capital DP <laughs> um, stuff. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of um, any kind of groups that I've met with. Um, the Cortex, we, specific, we have a, um, there's a Slack channel for Cortex users and like in cultural institutions. And, um, you know, having met with some of them and we've brought up digital preservation and they, they pretty much do the same thing I do. Like they, I mean, these are people that, you know, have been around and really know what they're talking about. And I'm like, oh, you don't do it either. <laughs> like, you know, I'm thinking I was missing something, but at this point, it's like what I said, like anything is better than nothing. So, um, you know, we're, we're hoping to eventually move into something, um, more robust. And I know some of my colleagues just really want like Preservica or something, solution like that. That, um, And I, I just kind of am fearful of bringing in another system at this point, because, you know, we, we, we're struggling to manage all of this. So, um, yeah. Yeah, we have the same issue. So I, I appreciate that feedback. Thank you. 
And I think you sort of touched on this a little in the last answer, but there's a question in the chat. Do any of these systems include digital preservation yeah. steps like checksums, migration tools, et cetera? Yeah, um, they, yeah, they do. Um, the, well, the, the dams does. The dams um, creates a checksum. I think DSpace also does, to be honest. Um, and it does dedupe on migration. So that's helpful. Um, and, um, but, but that's so far all we've explored with it. I'm sure there's other um, features that um, are there, but we haven't wrapped our head around it yet. Um, redundancy needs, yeah, we built that in um, when it's a, it's with Amazon, I can never remember the name of it. It's like cloud and, and so we have, three copies being like one in the dam and then there's like one in Canada and one in, you know, like three cloud-based ones. And then, um, thank you, yes. <laughs> and then um, we also do have local storage. We still have the servers that are um, our um, assets were originally stored on, which were just a kind of like a hot mess, um, but we still have them and my boss won't let IT sunset them until we have like uh, something to a secondary, tertiary, quarterary backup um, on site. Um, and we also have hard drives here, like we have a, a um, that we use for anything new that's coming in that we just back it up to there. So we, we do um, lots of copies. And I know there's a whole debate over like cloud versus on-prem. Um, we kind of just went with what our IT direction was going. I mean, we, we do have a pretty, well, we have a strong IT department at the museum. And once you get your, their ear, you, you know, just sort of go with it. So, and they're, they're ultimately supporting us and helping us with all of this. Um, from the princess around the corner. Okay, just wanna make sure I didn't miss any questions from the chat or anything. Um, I, yeah, the, the DAS certificate I did, it's, it, I, disclosure got, um, compensation from here for professional development because it's ridiculously expensive. Um, so, um, but I got like part of it, um, given back to me from, from the museum. So they paid for part of it. So, um, um, there was a lot of it that was, um, Maybe redundant. Um, honestly, I've I've gotten. I I took a I, I took like a one day seminar from the Digital Power Institute. Um, I think that was it, and it was like digital preservation for small size institutions. I was someplace else at the time, and um, and it it like was really compact and amazing, and I still pull on those resources all the time. Um, so. Like if it's a matter of, you know, spending over a thousand dollars or this was like $50 on transportation, you know, it was, um, you know, like that's really like, I, I would suggest something like that. Um, but the DAS certificate was um, really great. It went into nitty gritty and I was able to, um, cause it's like electives. And so you can kind of like customize, like I, I knew I wanted to learn more about like PDFA and LR, so I took that class and there was like one specifically on audiovisual archives, which we have a heavy um, AV archive here in the library that I wanted to learn about. So um, it, it, it was valuable. Yeah, it was. But I don't know if I would have done it if I had to pay out of pocket myself, to be honest. <laughs> I think Carly had their hand up first. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know how much you want to uh, um, go into this, Kendra, but um, I did sort of like uh, raised my eyebrow when you said that your position is term limited, um, just because I think all of us here will agree that like digital preservation kind of is ongoing and requires like, you know, stable <laughs> staff to be able to like um, continue this work. So I wonder if you could um, talk any about your experience of like having to think about, for instance, your documentation um, 
without necessarily knowing like who is going to be doing this work in the future or have you had conversations about who will do this work after um the yeah. term position yeah it's um i mean fingers crossed we're making an argument that they can't continue having this system without having me or having someone in my position. So, so there is a lot of um, talk with um, senior management. Um, and we're also in the process of uh, a second round. It's the Levy Foundation that we have our funding from. And it was, it's the Levy Archives Initiative. And there's like three projects that they funded for our library. Um, so we're um, preparing proposals for more projects. Um, so like kind of a loophole in there is like to write me into a next three year grant if, if need be, but, um, yeah, it is a little, um, hard. So that's why I like trying to, like, I'm very conscious of not keeping things in my head as much as I maybe would if I had the job security, knowing that five years from now, I'm the one who's going to have to remember that. So I try to document a lot of things. Um, but yeah, it is, it is a little, um, I, I think this was, this started as like an experiment and they wrote a, they wrote a digital archivist position for the grant. Um, and that was kind of like getting the foot in the door to get like digital awareness. Um, and now we're just trying to hang on to it. Hey, grant, grant work is <laughs> <I know>. hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's interesting when um, grant like grants are used yeah, for like preservation oriented positions because it's like there has yeah there has to be someone doing that work for the for the preservation to be occurring so it's it's good to know that you've been able to like um, yeah try to lay some groundwork for creating a more uh, like either an extension or like a position that could yeah. um, be doing this work. Hopefully that you could do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hopefully. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> it's over at the end of the year, so. Um, but everybody keeps telling me just act as if I have this job continue. And like, easy for you to say I have bills to pay, you know? <laughs> like, but whatever. Um, there's a couple of us. It's it's a very this um, you know, libraries and archives are you know, it's a lot of grant work. It's a lot of grant funding. And so you just kind of roll with it. I just, I just keep telling myself I didn't switch professions to make a lot of money. So, like, uh, Amy, Amy, you've had your hand up and we'll sort of have you close out the questions. Um, and then we'll have a few announcements before we uh, break off. <laughs> Sure, thanks Gil. Um, Kendra, I was going to say just before my question, it looks like you've set a really good foundation for, for future thinking, and so I, I really hope that that's successful. Um, my question, I don't know if this is entirely fair, it's really about institutional context, and I, I'm asking it partly because um, there's a lot of people from art museums naturally in, in this group today. So if in an art museum context, part of um, what makes, or you know, creates the texture of our digital preservation efforts or attempts is that there are digital objects in the art collection as well. And so a digital preservation policy may or may not sort of incorporate the whole museum situation. Is that possibly the case in a natural history museum or does it not make sense in the same way? No. And if it is, then is that like a hook in terms of integrating what you've led really in the museum to have a sort of wider applicability? That's a really good point. Um, the most of the collections in, in our institution have nothing to do with the library. I mean, like they, they are, but there there's collections management on every scientific departmental level and they have their own concerns with their physical objects. Um, we're trying to sort of step in and make ourselves available for their digital, their digitized and digital content. So we, um, so like anthropology has a really strong image database um, and we're talking to them about possibly integrating it with us. So their images could, we could help manage those, but you know, like we, and we're trying to get the, the data about their actual collections, um, but there's like, they have separate concerns about theirs. And so that's one of the things that we're, we're kind of like realizing now is that we can take that load off of them. You know, this is what we're 
we're good at. <laughs> we can describe images and we can describe um, digital assets. And so it's something that we're gonna, we're trying to um, provide for our different departments within the museum that have their own collection management issues and systems. And which is not universal throughout the institution. We, we um, they, there's a lot of different systems in place. I know we said that would be the last question, but I think we have one more in the chat. Are you are your collections using a different dam, um, like your non-library museum collections? Um, yeah, there's a bunch of different systems in use um, throughout the institution. A lot of the scientific collections use um, KEMU um, for their collections management. Some use uh, collective access, and then um, some just use like an access database. Um, there's, the communications department has a couple instances of extensive portfolio for their um, sort of production dams. Um, and, um, but other than that, I don't know of any other digital asset management systems in the, um, ac across the institution. I mean, ideally we wanna try to, scare, you know, make it more centralized. Um, but that's something we're, we're working with IT and we're trying to get, you know, upper senior, senior people to have an awareness of it. So, you know, cause it, it you know, everybody uses these assets. And so. All right. Well, thank you so much, Kendra, for, for uh, the presentation me. and thank you everyone for uh, asking such uh uh, thought provoking questions. Um, I think it was a really great conversation today. So thank you all for joining us.